Episode 31 with my bro, Kurt Chambers. He's an amazing singer, songwriter, and guitarist who holds it down for Dr. Dre and Eminem. He's got a new country record coming. You should check out all of his music on the Players Pick Podcast playlist on Spotify. Oh, dude, I have... (laughs) Like, do you remember your first couple guitar picks? Yeah, I remember. Absolutely, Okay, man. okay. <laughs> so, okay. Dude, I was a thumb guy. Oh. I was a thumb guy. I started in middle school, and uh, and I played with a thumb. I played with my thumb a lot. I have no idea why, man. I just played with the thumb. I grew up in a church where they uh, where they played a lot of pedal steels, and like uh, my uncles played banjos and all that. Mm. But those guys used the finger picks. The thumb picks and finger picks. Yeah, yeah you know, so... Um, you know, your index and your, what is this, your middle finger? Yeah. So, but I didn't dig it. You know, I was just like, man, I, I want to feel the string. So, man, for a long time, you know, even when I was playing pedal steel, I wouldn't use um, picks. I would just use my fingers, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, Freddie Cooper, a mentor of mine, he used to tour with like Boys to Men and a lot of people in Philadelphia. He goes, say, man, if you really want to be a guitar player, you're going to have to pick up that pick up a pick <laughs> <laughs> but i was pretty fast with that thumb dude like i had to like you know the you know up down up down strokes pretty fast it was Ooh. pretty believable you know at least i thought at that age <laughs> sure sure <laughs> <laughs> so you know <clears throat> i just you know i always run towards any challenge so I, he gave me a few picks and um they were mediums i don't remember what they were they were probably just like standard I don't know, man. Fender picks. I have no idea. I can't remember at that Sorry. point. But, um, I, dude, I learned how to play with the pick in a week. Really? I went to bed every night, and I he showed me, um, you know, like a fret covering type exercise. You know, the chromatic thing that everyone knows. Sure. And then um, I I play that every night when I went to bed until I fell asleep. And, mm. I, and I got flowing with the pick, in, dude, in like a week. I mean, like I I guarantee you by that the end of that week i was like yeah i can't play with the pick without a pick anymore mm. yeah it was just like kind of like a, a, a chromatic down up down up down up exactly kind of thing. skipping each string yeah and uh. then moving up to the you know from the f you know to the f sharp to the g yeah sure so i did that man for like a week you know and it really changed my life i i, I like the way that it felt i like the tone you know i, I like the feeling of not having as much control best way that i can describe it it just made me feel like oh i'm a little there's a bit of a disconnection because i got this thing in my hand mm. but i like it you know okay so ultimately though now all these years later you probably have more control yeah because you've sure. learned to use the instrument and use that tool yeah in a different way you know yeah i mean i have a very um abstract i would like to think way in an approach to playing guitar because I grew up playing drums and grew up singing and grew up playing piano and organ and bass. So, you know, a lot of times my approach on the guitar doesn't necessarily come from what a guitar player would do. It would be, man, I I, I, I feel like I want to hear an extra snare drum here. Mm. And, like, I'll just kind of, like, start playing on the strings and just kind of, like, smack, you know, smack in the guitar. Just kind of, so the pick sometimes is not even in my, I'm not using the pick, you know, or or it's in my hand, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing I had to learn. I used to see like guys like John Mayer and do that. I was like, man, where, where, where is he hiding the pick right now? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, like a, a real trick. It is, dude. Especially if you're if you're if you're like a, a technical player that's trying to hide it, yeah, so that you can do a little finger picking. Mm-hmm. I just had uh, Andre mm-hmm. Neary on the podcast, mm-hmm. uh, and he he does this thing uh, where he's like holding it mm-hmm. and he slides it real quick. To yeah. real quick to the pinky, yeah. and tucks it. Ooh, like he's real quick with it, and then he starts he starts yeah. going off with his with yeah. his finger picking, and then he just he just slides it right back, and he's like bam bam. And so, I, just like you watching me do it right now, yeah. I'm I'm pra- I'm practicing because <laughs> like when he was here, I was like, oh man, I'm dropping the pick. Yeah. Every, at least I can do it kind of slow now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but but I don't really I haven't really had the need for or tried to 
figure that out, you know? Yeah, but that's that's crazy. Do you, you end up doing uh, a decent amount of finger picking, though? Or yeah, is it- I do. I, I think I just kind of put it in my palm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't only have the whole pinky thing that he does. I mean, that's that's amazing. I'm trying it and I'm failing at it right now. <laughs> well, now, now now you have a like a magic trick to be working on. Like know, when, right? when, you're, when you're talking and you're waiting, you're free, you're free to, to do to your cut. You know, in the studio, you can just be sitting there going, "Oh man, Let's see," because it's like it's like it's like almost like a card trick or something. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. If your hands are too sticky, it ain't gonna work, man. Yeah, it's like you don't want to be too clean. You don't want to be too right too crazy i don't know i wonder if he does it with the little jazz threes i mean that's another thing that you you just called it you just called it he's a jazz three guy okay yeah so <laughs> i don't know if i'm rolling ahead but no go so, for it so after the pick thing happened um somehow i got my hands on the jazz three pick the little red boys oh yeah changed my life yeah so for years that was my pick i mean i put that pick probably defined whatever little bit of playing I thought I was doing through all the years of, you know, I used to tour with um, Eric Roberson. He was a indie, he's still an indie artist, but he was like a really huge indie artist before the whole indie thing became popular. So he played London. I mean, we played Paris. We played all over the U.S. We played, you know, everywhere. You know, he just toured everywhere. He's a Neil Soul, kind of like a um, D'Angelo, if you will, kind of guy, you know. So, um... I played everywhere with him. I played with the Jazzy Fat Nasties, which were a group that was managed by Rich Nichols. Rich Nichols was the manager of the Roots. Mm. So um, I was, you know, 18, 19 years old, playing festivals overseas, opening for the Roots with the Jazzy Fat Nasties in a three-piece band. That's so dope. Guitar, bass, and drums. That's it. So um, the pick... Uh, that pick was my pick. The red jazz pick was my pick, man. I liked it because I can be super fast on it, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, at that time, I was really into like playing a lot of leads and just playing like a lot of like um, I guess like aggressive, just kind of like you know we call them drones or footballs, you know, distortion type, root and mm-hmm. octave, root and fifth type things. Okay. So I wasn't playing a lot of um, like lush chords and the whole like that whole thing yet so i wasn't really missing the real estate of the pick mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. um but yeah that pick got me through all that man and then it wasn't until uh a few years ago i was like man i need a little bit more of a pick for some chords and stuff and i tried it and then i was like man i can't solo this i can't i can't, I can't solo fast enough so i went back to the jazz three and then now i'm actually i'm, I'm back on the uh tortex you know green yeah, yeah, uh, the 88s. Yeah, the um, the medium size, and I think I'm at the one point something. Oh, and the one point So yeah, like the blue, blue is uh one point oh. The blue, yeah. Green is 88. Yeah, yeah. So those two are good. I've been gauges. I've been. I got one in my wallet actually. Uh, I've been digging the green, but but they, uh, you guys made me some greens. You made me some j- jazz oh, I XL. We, I did. I remember. I have one around here. It's yeah, like Kurt Chambers. Yeah, uh, green Tortex. Is yep. it jazz? XL J- Jazz 3 XL for the Eminem tour. Yeah, 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 that's right. So I started giving those away, and now I'm like, man, I'm moving up, so I need to get some more of me because I'm digging, <laughs> I'm, I'm digging these blue 1.0 millimeter mediums, man. Yeah, they um, let's do some of those for you. I like them. I mean, I feel like they're thick enough for me to kind of do my shred thing, but they're big enough for me to when I'm ready to chord and feel like I can really like strum with elegance if you will it's yeah. it's enough real estate there for me to you know so we'll see this seems to be working out <laughs> that's awesome it's so cool i mean the jet the little red jazz three changed my life too like i was all on those what the the 88s that you're just showing me yeah. like the regular standard shape for a long long time yeah and it took a, a buddy of mine that was just way more shreddy than me and, yeah. he, and i was watching like how do you do what you're doing he's like yeah so check this pick out and yeah I'm like, <laughs> no, it ain't the pick, man. I mean, well, he's like, it isn't exactly all the pick, but it's <laughs> definitely the pick is helping, you know. Because yeah. and uh, and I, and when I first held that pick, I was like, yeah, that doesn't even, I don't even, I can't hold on to. It. It's like too small. Like yeah, I was, yeah. I was intimidated by that. And he's like, just don't play with anything else for a while. For a while, yeah. You do, it'll, it'll, you'll assimilate. Yeah. Like, okay. How did it feel when she got into it? Yeah. Then I was into it, and I was like, oh. And I went back to the other pick, and it was like, oh man, that thing's big and clumsy now. <laughs> like I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. touch that thing now. Yeah. It feels, it was weird. 
Yeah. And so I stayed on Jazz 3 for a long time, for like the next probably five or six years. Yeah. yeah. And then I ended up working at Dunlop, you know? I, I bef- it, and then it came, and I was like, oh, then I had to try every pick. Yeah. And I've tried, and I like a lot now. Now I'm kind of amapicturious. Exactly. You know, yeah. I can get into almost any pick. Yeah. With the, with the, you know, just kind of leave me alone with it for a while. I'll figure it out. Yeah. But if it's the one thing I don't like is if it's if a pick has too much drag. Like if it's got if it kind of drags on the strings a little too much. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tortex inherently has a drag on it because of that kind of harder edge. Mm-hmm. It's like stamped out of a sheet, mm-hmm. and then it's then it's like uh, uh, polished or whatever, right? You know, tumbled. But um, it's like that's a that's a thicker one. That's a one point five. So like you can you can really see the pronounced word like the edge is yeah. on the thinner ones. You don't really notice that as much. Yeah, for sure. But then you get to like a, a, a an injection molded like that piece yeah. where it's rounded and yeah. it's like made to have the least amount of drag possible, right? So and it's kind of that's like the the difference in all these different picks. You look when you start looking at the edges of picks, you're like, oh, are they designing that to have some some like some some rasp to yeah, it yeah. which tortex has like a certain kind of cool yeah. rasp to it yeah uh or are they making it for speed and jazz 3 also has that bevel um it's not as smooth as that or it's not as smooth as that that injection mold one but it's still like kind of angled at, a, at, at to a point where it has a little bit of rasp and a little more flow what's the angle for on this one like what it, what is it so that angle, uh, so that's the Andy James uh, signature uh, flow pick. So it's mm-hmm. it's that that whole thing is designed like like I was just saying to to kind of release from the strings quicker. Okay. So it's a smoother. So you're not going to hear you. this pick yeah. on the strings as much as you will a Tortex. Right. Got you. Tortex will. It's a little more. It's just like, I think Tortex is strangely enough like the sound of most picks. It's either Tortex or like a celluloid, like a Fender. Yeah. celluloid pick you know which is also smoother it's a smoother material warmer material yeah uh yeah it's not yeah and it's a molded pick as well it's like so it has kind of smoothed out edges because of the way the mold comes together yeah versus the chopped out and then kind of rounded edge yeah. uh i like them both though like i was playing the tortex a bunch this morning uh thinking man i love the way they snap back and i love the way the sound it feels yeah. you know especially yeah. the thinner picks yeah. 73 yeah for acoustics yeah yeah for got sure. that give you can kind of maneuver it around the strings a little better yeah that's why the, the like the dunlop nylons are really popular too like the thin yeah thin ones we made some for justin timberlake that were like uh because that's all he does is strum on the yeah acoustic, acoustic. Yeah. yeah and they're like 0.46 oh wow <laughs> I'll, I'll show you that i got a couple of them that's right really here. really thin really small yeah but i mean like you know, yeah. That's like kind of that's his gig, and it makes it easy to get that sound, get that flappy kind of strummy, yeah, quick strummy sound. I don't, but. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember getting stuck with the jazz three on the acoustic before. <laughs> oh no, was it on a gig? Well, it's just like being on a gig, yeah, an Eminem gig, and you just can't switch fast enough. Ugh. So he's just like, uh, gotta, I gotta play this song with this jazz three right uh, now. Is it like a strummy song? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, Stan or that's all strumming. Stan okay. or uh, Love the Way You Lie yeah, with him and Rihanna. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. heavy strumming. Yeah. So it's like, ah, where's the pick? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Too far down stage and can't get back to my picks. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so on, when you're on stage, do you have uh, you have like a, a microphone that you do you do backup vocals too with him? Yeah, I do, but um, I never did the whole. I don't, I don't remember ever doing the whole microphone thing with the with the picks in there. Yeah, we just always kind of sat it on top of the amp. But, okay, you know, I don't know why we didn't think of that because the, the other option is like tape them on the bottom horn of your guitar. Yeah, or on the headstock. yeah, yeah, or key it. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but. <laughs> I don't, I'm just trying to think right. out loud for you. It's right. future reference, <laughs> right. you know. <laughs> like when I play a lot of my old shows, sometimes my own shows, I just kind of have I have picks it all over the place. Yeah, like all over the place on stage. I'll just pick one up. <laughs> I like that. You know, that's easy though. Yeah, it's like that's, I mean, that's like my house. I just leave them around everywhere. <laughs> so I'm sitting over here jamming. I got piles yeah. of picks. Today I had to clean them up and put them all kind of around because otherwise I got piles of picks everywhere. Piles of that sounds like a song. That's funny. Piles of picks. It might be in your next country tune. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it works out actually. It sounds silly, man, but like the fans, they seem to like that. You know, you, you got picks laying around, and you just kind of pick one up, and then you play it, and then you you throw it out to the crowd. And yeah. You pick it, up, and you know, they just, like pick that one up, and you know. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they love that. Like, yeah. I love that. I I I love getting picks from players that, especially if they've used them. Yeah. Like I remember just before I ever worked in the industry or anything, I thought it was the coolest thing. I wanted a guitar pick over an autograph over a photo. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> just because like I thought that was that's the thing that they touched. Yeah, they they played it on a song. Yeah, it has wear marks, even if it's a little bit of wear marks on their strings from yeah. that night. Yeah, that's cool. That's a memento. That's you know. Yeah. <laughs> so and there's and, and there's you know pick collectors worldwide that are out there just like trading. Oh, dude, you got a like a Kurt Chambers from the <laughs> from the from the 2016 tour, bro? Is it got string marks in it? Okay, if it does, then I, all right, that's probably good enough. I'll I'll trade you that and this, yeah. for, you know, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's that type of it's type that type of world out there. That's awesome. I don't you don't always see it. You don't always hear about it. That's uh, cool. So you've been. Uh, You've been with Dre for how long now? Since like 2012 or? Yeah, 2012. As soon as I I moved out here. Like I was coming in 2011, but I was off and on. But yeah, definitely 2012. Were you you doing Dre before M? I did. No, I was doing M before Dre. That's how I met Dre because we did uh, Coachella. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. We did. We did. He did. He came out for a show with us. I want to say in London. Hmm. Yeah, we did the Wembley Stadium, and I that's when he came out. I think that may be the first time, I think. Yeah. And he, he liked, you know, the way we sound and everything, and then it was it came time for him to do Coachella, and, you know, and he's just like, man, those guys are solid, so just keep them, you know. Cool. You know, I'm, I guess that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got you got a call, you got an email, or yeah, somebody yeah, say, "Hey, yeah. want you for the Coachella gig?" Yeah, man. So that was uh it was crazy because um, I got an opportunity. To, my boy called me. He's like, "Man, this is going to go down," and um, you know, I'm just, you know, if you want to be a part, you know, I would love to have you. And he's like, you know, Dre's digging what we did with Eminem, and I was like, "Hell yeah!" And um, he calls me the next day, and he's like. You can totally do what you want to do, but there's another there's another gig that you could do. Um and you know this particular artist, you know she's she likes the way you play anyway. So hmm. she's like it's for it's a it's a year long tour. And <laughs> and I, and the at the time Dre's thing was only um it was about I think we were we were working for about a month and a half or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Man, I don't care." I was just like, I'll turn that year down of work to work a month with Dre. Yeah, and it's turned into years. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was that's using your intuition right there. Yeah, and man. doing the thing that you really wanted to do. You got to do what you want to do, man. That you got to go with your heart and do what you want to do. I feel like the universe honors that. You know, hmm. you know, especially when you're making a sacrifice. You know, because you're just going after a dream and your heart's in the right place. You know, you, the universe is always like, you know, I'm going to take care of you for that. Mm. You know, so I like hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> so when when you like now that you've been doing this gig a bit for, for Drake, because you obviously play for him for live and now you're doing a lot more studio work mm-hmm. as well. And he's yeah. helping to produce this new record of yours. Mm-hmm. Is it OK we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about it. We could talk about it. Um uh he's uh we're just experimenting right now like um uh we don't really have the sound yet mm. um and the good thing about it is like we're everyone's open you know so we're just trying different things to see like what we gravitate to and i'm super excited about that because every day it's just something different and he's just a genius I mean, he always has like great ideas and he's always sending me a lot of great ideas so um, we'll try this one day and it'll be totally different. And we'll try this another day and it'll be totally different. So like the experiment, the experiment, experimental process of it right now for me is really, really exciting. Yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. And this, this is his first country record, I imagine. Or has he done other stuff like this? Similar? Nah, man. I mean, it's just, 
it was my idea. I asked him if he could help me out, you know, and you know, he's just like, you know, I, you know, I want to see you win, so mm. I, I'm down to experiment with you and see what you know, mm. we'll see what happens. I want to see you win, yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so I'm excited, man. I'm excited to like have him, you know, help me out to see, you know, if we can come up with something that the world may possibly hear one day. Yeah, yeah. no, that's exciting, dude. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys will sort it out, but it'll be in its own time. Yeah, I'm excited, man. It's you know, <laughs> when you when you uh, when you gig with with Dre, like, what is there any favorite tunes, like favorite melodies, or anything that like when you're playing on guitar for him? Yeah, I mean, like those guys, man. Like Eminem, M, you know, Snoop and Eminem and Dre and Exhibit and those guys and Fred Wreck, you know, mm. all those guys are like West Coast geniuses, and they they're s- such students of music in all different styles of music. Um, it to the point where it shows in their music, you know. Mm-hmm. So it naturally makes it extremely um, fun to play those records. A lot of people always ask me, Eminem has a band? Like, <laughs> it's like, what is just, I'm just like, yeah, have you listened to those records? I mean, with the classically bass changes and, you know, the hard drums and, you know, like, um, it's, mu- it's very musical. It's, it's even yeah. more musical with the band, you know. So, and then the Dre stuff as well, you know, like the Chronic stuff. And, um, it's amazing to play. It's fun to play. It hits hard. It lends itself to like, you know, great moments and heavy drums and great guitar solos. We, um, I was, I went to go see. Oh man, the show we went to go see. <laughs> yeah, the Jidenna. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that first of all, thanks for bringing me there. Of course, dude. That was a blast. <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> But I mean, I even told you about the story when we played the show there, and just like when we played the Beats Party, and it was Dre's playlist of all the artists that he loves. Yeah, you know, for me, um, it was an amazing playlist. You know, he he killed it, and it was, I, was, I was just happy to be there and be a part. And one of the things that were so exciting about it was um, getting to play a lot of those hits. You know, like the P Diddy hits, and you know, like uh, the fifty, the 50, 50 Cent hits, and mm. Eminem's hits, and Oh man, oh, Cypress Hill was there. You know what I Damn. mean? I'm like, um, man, who else was that? Was Nas there? I can't. I don't want to call you wrong. I can't remember right now, and I don't want to, you know. You said be, Paul McCartney was there, being right? correct. Yeah, he was there, man. He was hanging out in the back. He didn't play, but he was there hanging oh, okay. out. Yeah, we didn't play any of his songs, but he was there, and everyone got to meet him. You know, so legit. So yeah, I mean, like it feels good to play those records because I mean, it's just like hip hop then was. You know, you know, it was made with a lot of musical nuances, you know, that we love as musicians because it was probably coming off of, you know, they used to sample a lot of jazz records. Right. I'm not sure what year, you know, like, but somewhere in the late 90s or something like that, you know, they were sampled a lot of jazz guys. So, you know, hip hop guys and producers, they were influenced by that sound so it naturally lends itself to like kind of like for you to be able to one-up it a little more when you play it live and just mm. add the band yeah, do you feel like uh we've gotten away from that a little bit no i wasn't necessarily insinuating that and that's why when i started saying it i was <laughs> i didn't want to sound like no i mean it's it's still there you know I, I just feel like you know people are influenced by so many things now and now because of the internet and now music uh yeah, is exposed at such a rapid rate Mm. um we we hear a lot of different artists you know and like we still have like the j cole kind of guys and the kendrick lamar guys which and i feel like i feel like their albums are really musical you know and then you know then there's stuff that's just trappy and it's simple and it's just dope i like it you know it it is what it is it's you know maybe a four bar loop or something like that and that's cool you know so it's just just different things yeah the trappy thing is interesting because part of me definitely still uh, enjoys it when it's done well. Yeah. Uh, but because it's almost like so so easy for too many people to do yeah. that, like you just hear so much bad trap. Yeah. That yeah, like yeah. you're like, oh, really? Yeah. You can put in a bad. You're just making it like hard to like listen to all the trap now that you. Yeah. Sucking so bad at it, you know, <laughs> in a weird way. It can, it can, it can, it can, anybody can, almost anybody can, kind of pull it out and kind of like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And the mumble rap stuff is just not my gang. You know, I just like not into. Yeah, me either. Into much of that. I'm glad they're getting their check. You know, but <laughs> you know more. But I just I want to hear 
some lyrics and I want to hear some melody. You know what I mean? Like I want to know what to, I want to know what to say to a girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still that. I'm we're, we're that guy. Yeah. You know, exactly. We are that guy. Yeah, give me something <laughs> to say, man. Not <laughs> no, man. I need <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like no, I can't. But but I do have fun with a few friends of mine, like kind of just in tongue in cheek, like we listen to some of this stuff for fun, yeah, yeah because yeah. it's hilarious to yeah, us. Yeah, We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so then after a while, you're like, oh man, I got that tune in my head. <laughs> like now, I I kind of strangely like it, but not yeah. not like I would put it on to like listen to it, listen to it, just to like have fun <laughs> with friends, you know? No, nah, I feel you. <laughs> some of it's good. Yeah, yeah. Some of it can work some out. Of it's good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, I'm, <laughs> it'd be interesting to see where that goes see what what the how it, that evolves because like there there is some really interesting trap element stuff uh in really good hip-hop now mm-hmm. um so and the fact like you got artists like logic mm-hmm. like yeah. logic to, for me is a really good example of mm-hmm. like a, a, a really diverse artist that mm-hmm. can kind of handle hold it down old school hold it down with the trap yeah and and when he does the trap stuff it's it's definitely more interesting than most people Mm-hmm. You know, he's yeah. got a, he's got a higher le- skill set than a lot of the for sure. other rappers too. For sure. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> yeah. You know, bigger vocabulary. I don't know. You know, whatever yeah. it is. But um, yeah. So it's cool. And I and, and now that I've been hearing, uh, there's a lot more trap in like instrumental guitar music happening too. I don't know. If yeah. You, are, you, are you hip to this? Yeah. I mean, definitely. I heard some things. So and I knew you knew that was hip hop influences all styles. Of music. It's funny that that That's happens. Right. So I knew that was gonna come. I knew that was gonna happen. It had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, like this band Polyphia that I was out uh, with the night before, mm-hmm. uh, we we hung out. Uh, they're one of the kind of the main innovators, like now, like this young kind of like boy band. They started mm-hmm. off like like this kind of. I mean, my friends used to joke like they're like Justin Timberlake for guitar. It's like in a, in a we, kind of like got this hip hop kind of flashy mm-hmm. boy bandish thing. They're all young kids from 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 Texas, um, and they've got skills like on the guitar, like in a, in a, they make all these cool trappy melodic lines. Yeah, and then they've got a real drummer throwing down a lot of trappy style influenced stuff. That's dope. And then some electronics to kind of fill it in, you yeah. know. But uh, they're really fun. And it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. You have to check them out. Yeah, I, I got to do that. Yeah, cool yeah, band. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so you, didn't you say uh, you were you were raised in Philly, right? Yeah, man, born and raised in Philadelphia. And uh, you said you were, like raised in church, and like you, was drums your first instrument? Yeah, drums and singing um, were my first two instruments. I, yeah, and I started started all that in church. Yeah. Yeah. You still, uh, you still feel like connected to the church and connected to your faith in that way, in some yeah, ways. Or? Yeah, um, I got away from it for a while, just, um, just going on a musical journey and just going, just you know, just you know, being a growing young adult at some point, you know, mm-hmm, <laughs> you go mm-hmm. through all those phases. But um, I'm wanting to get back into, um, wanting to get into the country mu- music genre. Um, kind of like ushered me into getting back into like my roots because that's really what my roots is. That ch- church that I grew up in was very like bluesy, um, you know, country. Uh, um, what is it? Bluegrass sounding, you know, like hmm. a lot of lap steel slide guitars and you know, like twelve bar blues type gospel songs, you know, and so like. That I spent the first probably eighteen years of my life just hearing that, mm. you know, okay. and, and then <laughs> when I finally uh, got, was, I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music, so I didn't grow up listening to, to country music. I grew up listening to a lot of gospel music and, uh, man, just like some quartet gospel guys as well. But I didn't really hear any secular music until i was in high school and i could listen to jazz mm. and i saw I started studying jazz and then I, I went to the store and i saw dixie chicks live album <laughs> you know and that changed my life really yeah dog i know it sounds funny and it's probably oh, that's awesome may man. not be a very attractive part of the <laughs> interview but it's the truth so dude, dixie chicks changed your life i want to tell me more man i heard that dixie chicks live album and i was like this band sounds amazing mm. 
you know, and I was like, it sounds like my church on Sunday mornings, but it's, oh, but, wow. it's but it's country music. And that's when I was just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be doing this at some point in my life for the rest mm-hmm. of my life. So I was the weird guy, black guy in North Philly riding around North Philly with listening to Dixie Chicks and like <laughs> Alan Jackson and Gretchen. I love the women singers because my mother sings really well, my aunt sing really well. So I always gravitated to really like powerhouse singers and really a lot of harmony. Mm-hmm. So it was it was weird that I listened to more of like the Dixie Chicks and like um, uh, Gretchen Wilson and a lot of women. You know, Celine Dion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Wow. Yeah. So that was that. (laughs) So in a a, a really interesting way, like you coming back around and doing this country gig uh, and and working out that music for yourself is is really more is like a full circle thing for you in a in a way. Right. It's a complete full circle. And I've never been as happy. You know what I mean? Oh, man, that's good to hear. I've never been as happy. You know, like um, I love playing, you know, like hip hop, you know, certain hip hop stuff and you know, like you know, R and B's cool. You know, but I'm a I'm a I'm a rocker, singer, songwriter, country guy at heart with the aggressiveness of hip hop. Mm. That's the best way to put it. Okay, you know what I mean? Like that's it. That's that's who. That's exactly you know who I am and where I love to be. <laughs> that's awesome. What What do you think um, about? I mean, like the contrast between like your upbringing and then being like working for a guy like Dre and like, I mean, in, in that, do you feel the, the, the paradox and then like the contrast or like, uh, do you feel anything that like, you know, opposes each other there or, uh, meaning like, like how I was brought up in the church and all that. Yeah. Or? And then like some, some, of, I'm just saying some of the content, yeah you know, that comes out of Dre and Eminem. Right. Like, I mean, and how that contrast, like, yeah. How do you um, feel about that? I mean, it's, you know, everyone has their path. It's funny, when I, when I first started working with Eminem, uh, I, start, I started working with Eminem when he did the Recovery album. Oh, okay. And um, I told my mother that I was working with him, and um, <laughs> she was just like, man, isn't that, isn't that the guy that's like, says really mean stuff about his mother and all that? Uh, <laughs> damn, mom. You... <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> she got you. And I was just like, man, I was just like, well, you know, he's allowed to speak his life, you know, and talk about, you know, his, his experiences, you know. And I, and then I said, I went in to say, have you heard his last album, you know, his latest album? I was like, it's actually really inspirational. And she listened to a few songs mm. and she was just like, oh, I, li- I like where he is now. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, I, in, I mean, I don't see any issues with it but I, I i could see how other people might yeah like hear that and like oh he's a christian boy yeah. from philly that loves country music that ended up playing for dre and eminem yeah and yeah uh, and exhibit and all these other yeah. big great great hip-hop artists you know yeah man i love it i mean i'm totally prepared for that the thing is the thing is man the universe and god always has you know a direction for all of us and mm. um i told my mom my mother when i was in high school and I, it's funny because i had this conversation with her last week i said mom do you remember when i said never judge a lot of uh the artists that are not doing uh gospel music because you don't know their journey and how many people are going to be affected by the, the decisions that they make once they do choose you know to believe or I can't say believe in God, but once they do choose Christ or once they choose a message of love or whatever their message is. Right. And um, I said that to her in middle school, or I'm sorry, high school. So um, when all when Kanye started doing his thing and, you know, and Diddy's, you know, all, you know, effectively talking, um, uh, openly talking about T.D. Jakes and how it, he's inspired by all that stuff, mm. I hit my mom back and I was just like, yeah, your son's kind of psychic. Remember when I said, like... <laughs> You know, like, you know, you can't judge these people because, you know, the, the ministers that are, you know, preaching to like, you know, I don't know, like a thousand people every Sunday are never going to be the ministers that are, you know, preaching to 20 million people, mm-hmm. you know, uh, by way of hip hop, you know, and their influence and they're gaining the trust in all these people. And then years later, they say, you know, they use their influence to say, you know, like, to, to promote love or you know god or positivity you know and all that so like 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 the bible says i mean you got every you know like if 
if God's not coming back until everyone hears his message of love, then everyone has to have get their opportunity to present that. So hmm. it ain't always the guy with the suit on every Sunday. Sometimes it's the guy that say, Hey, I did a lot of crazy shit when I was 20. Hmm. Y'all don't, y'all don't do that. Amen. I can hear that. You know? Yeah. So that's what well, I, I, I really, I dig that story. And I dig, I dig the way of looking at that because, uh, you're right. Uh, in my opinion, uh, that, the way I've learned to see uh, God is to try to see God in all things, right? Like mm-hmm. to see to see that that ultimate creative force of energy in mm-hmm. in the smallest of things. Because when mm-hmm. we start isolating it to mm-hmm. oh, God only lives in church. God mm-hmm. only uh, is uh, you know on Sundays or when I'm praying or when I'm good. Yeah. You know, uh, then, then, then we we set we we do a weird mental separation, and we mm-hmm. we fooled ourselves mm-hmm. because uh, <laughs> the whole thing God is so much bigger than our narrow point of view. For sure, right? Yeah. We have a very you know, unfortunately, but fortunately, I mean, a part of our narrow point of view is what what makes us who we are, and we see <laughs> it a certain way, right? So it's like the things we will never know the full story, but mm-hmm. but trying to find some objectivity and finding seeing how we don't see it all mm-hmm. and and then and then starting to see well if if we are to believe in a in a creative force that started all of this in motion mm-hmm. then then literally everything that you come in contact your total environment your entire world your the light and the dark all there because of that initial creative force mm-hmm. and you're and you're not separate from it mm-hmm. yeah. so we just have to wake up to that over and over again you know because it's easy to forget <laughs> yeah <laughs> Over and over again, yeah. Yeah, every every day is another opportunity. It is, it is, it is. And it's a strange, and it's strange for me yeah. because even though I was raised that way, uh, I did I did take a big pause yeah. on a lot of that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, <laughs> and it was when I started getting back into yoga, getting into yoga, and like studying Buddhism mm-hmm. and Hinduism mm-hmm. and all these other different Gnostic type religions that I started actually going, oh, it's all connected. Mm-hmm. It's all it's. Oh, it's yeah. it, it sounds like it's different. It looks like it's different on the surface, mm-hmm. but the Hindus, uh, they 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 have all these different names for all these different gods. But it's all they're all different faces of the one true God, mm-hmm. like the behind the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I when I when I started re- kind of seeing all those connections, I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm 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 on bo- I've been on board all the whole time. I guess yeah. I just didn't know that I was exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you uh you feel um you feel connected to like a, a way of uh, like being in the world through your your beliefs? Do you have like um does it does it kind of like light the way for you in a way like help inform your decisions in life then? Um meaning like uh I don't understand. Like uh the way you feel about your religion or your god, you know, like your mm-hmm. own personal situation do you feel like that really like helps inform how you make decisions in life oh yeah absolutely yeah um i'm all about you know being honest and being right and being fair and and like you know doing unto others as i would have them you know do me did i say that right yeah, yeah do okay. unto you yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. it works oh uh yeah it's definitely um a driving force but you know what's crazy man like ah that lesson came from uh, people that I started to work with in the music industry hmm. that I looked up to. Really? You know, like, uh, um, some of the people that you expect to learn those lessons from don't teach you those lessons. And then some of the people that um, you expect to, like, you're like man, that person is going to be mean or this person is going to be very... Um, 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 untouchable if you will Mm. they were super nice and they were like very open so like man i learned those lessons of of being honest and loving and all that stuff from like you know some of the most contrary people that you would expect to Mm. learn it from like oh wow this is awesome this guy doesn't shoot everybody and kill him you know what (laughs) i mean like you know so uh, you know but yeah that's cool it sounds like you found some grace uh yeah in in the land of what you thought might have been all gangster 
Yeah, it's just yeah, and it's it's funny how it happens that way, man. But you know, and that's another thing I joke with my mother about, you know. So, yeah, I mean, yes, the church did it did help, you know. Later on, actually, more than earlier on, because when you're younger, you know, I wasn't listening to anything. I just wanted to jump on every instrument that I could and play it. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but I'm heavy on the Jakes now, and like all the, you know, like all the, I'm heavy on everything on YouTube. You know, like there's there's another guy that I've Tony Robbins. Oh yeah. Uh, been on him and you know, I I get in my Jakes, I get in my meditating and you know, just all that stuff to empower my mind every day to just, you know, cuz as artists and entrepreneurs as you know, you you being one yourself, the the it's it's a tough time out here and the world's always pulling on you every day with all of our dreams and aspirations and the doors that we knock on and the things just the daily struggle of everything that we have to maintain and what we want to do it can be a lot man so it's important to always just like recenter and you know all that so uh that's kind of what i i do every day to mm. just stay on track and do you have like a a, a physical workout like do you go to the gym a lot? oh or? yeah i'm in the gym heavy yeah yeah do you yeah. just do lift or what? What is, is yeah. you have a, what's, what's, what's your program? Yeah, I'm a lifter, but I love to hike too. When I come out here, mm. I hike a lot. Hiking is very spiritual for me, man. Like I've, you know, like I, you know, you know, like not to go there, but I, I am very sometimes too in tune, man. I remember, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I remember one time I was hiking down Ryman, and I was just listening to you know some Aretha Franklin, you know, oh, man. And man, I had. <laughs> you guys are gonna clown me for this, <laughs> dude. I had how I got over on loop, mm. like her old song, how yeah. I got over. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm running, I'm I'm hiking and I'm running up the hike, and I'm just like tears, of just being grateful, and I'm and I'm running and I'm like, and I'm a I approach everything like a fighter, like I'm a, I'm a very intense guy, so I'm running and I'm listening to it, and I'm crying, and I'm singing, and I'm like. I don't know what I'm doing at that point, throwing punches or whatever. And people were just looking at me like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> but dude, man, just the feeling of like uh, uh, pressing and being grateful and just being hiking and being outside and being close to the sun and being close to, you know, God and all that. Those are those are the moments that I feel are very important because man, it's a gift from God to be able to feel you know what I mean? His presence and just whether it's assurance, whether whatever it is, you know, mm. and, you know, so a lot of people don't they don't get a chance to feel that. So, yes, I do take my workout as a form of uh, meditating and spiritual experience. You know, it's like it's like church too. take care of your body, mm. take care of your mind, you right. know, eat right, work out, you know, all that stuff. Go drink at night, yeah, as well. You know, and we take care of you. But we, we, we did pretty good. We were pretty moderate the other night. We oh, did a good job. Oh yeah, we yeah we threw, we threw it down. I threw it down last yeah. night too. Yeah. <laughs> I still got up and taught yoga yesterday, so I know I was doing all right. <laughs> yeah, you. I appreciate I appreciate not uh, not going over the over the bar. That's that how I got over it. You know, it's interesting. That's my favorite Roots record too. Um, really? Like that just happens to be my favorite. I like all the Roots stuff, but yeah, how yeah, I got yeah. over was like really my record for yeah. whatever I was. Well, I know why. I was going through a divorce, and gotcha. like that just like it was how I got over. Man. Like that record was on repeat, and I and I and I feel music wow, in a similar dude. way because I go out and work out, and I take uh take my headphones with me if I'm yeah. running. Um, <laughs> or I put, put music on if I'm doing yoga at home or something, or I'm hiking. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have had a lot of, uh, connection, kind of like connected feeling moments where I'm out in nature yeah. and the song hits yeah. and the, the view hits and the body yeah. high hits. Yeah. And yeah, I've, yeah. I've bawled, I've yeah. cried, I've, yeah. I've thrown punches at the sky, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> so, uh, real stuff. Man. I'm in that club too, man. Yeah, I'm dude. In that club. Yes. That is. Yeah. There's nothing quite like it nothing like it man because the it's like a connect it's uh and it's one of these things uh <laughs> i was watching some comedy last night dude and it was so funny uh it was this guy uh jeff uh, uh he was he he was on uh with uh curb your enthusiasm right or I, I forget his last name jeff something okay I think it's I know who you're talking about. It's a new about. comedy special, right? Like on Netflix or something. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll think of his last name later, but uh, he goes, he, he was talking about how he's like, uh, it's cool that you guys are atheists 
It's cool. Like any of you guys that you feel like you're atheist, that's fine. But you have obviously never tasted ice cream or had an orgasm. Okay. Because <laughs> both those things are Wait. proof God exists. Wait, <laughs> he was, and he was like, no, I'm going to say it again for you. Like, hey, so ice cream is so good. He's like, that to me, proof God exists. <laughs> All right, it's so it's the perfect combination of things. He's like, and you atheist, you like, have you have you not had you mu- you must not have had orgasm because then you that is the greatest thing of all time. You would know that God exists. <laughs> like, I was just like cracking up at oh my that, God. that. That's the way he wanted to communicate. You know, sure, like the thing, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and it's it's fun, man. It's fun. It's fun to like to poke fun at the thing because mm-hmm. I've I've got a, a lot of atheist friends, mm-hmm. and matter of fact, the last guy I had on here. Um, Clay uh, from Polyphia, the bass player mm-hmm. from Polyphia, he's he's pretty hard edged against religion and everything, and I can get it. He's like, man, when we die, like just lights out, like we're done. Come on, what does it matter? Like, and I've never died. But I don't really know, but like, right, yeah, you know. And I'm like, I could get that. I mean, I, I, and he's like, to me, that's that's peaceful. Like that sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Like just being done with this. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's cool, but. I kind of hope there's something else, you know. Like personally, I, I kind of I'm 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 a fan of. I don't know if it's going to be that verbatim thing that we see in the Bible and heaven, right, and you're yeah. going to see all your friends and family in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that's a real, uh, you know, that's one way of looking at it. That and that, and that and it could have could be interpreted that way. But I'm just kind of hoping that we have some sense of returning back to the cosmic energy, returning back to God, returning back to that that primal source energy Mm -hmm. and have some conscious maybe and maybe there's a few answers that just kind of come to you you know like i would love to believe that that's the case (laughs) if nothing else yeah if if everything else is real i'll take it but yeah we'll know at some point yeah yeah (laughs) that's a that's the one thing that uh i i I tend to ask a lot is like what do you think what do you what do you think happens what do you what what's your yeah i don't know man i mean you know i I really don't know you know i know for me what what i would probably like is i would probably just like to be an energy and like some you know that feeling that you have when you uh what is it deja vu Mm -hmm. if there if it's somewhere in between just being a light and an energy an energy and deja a little bit of deja vu like this kind of looks familiar but i don't know where i know it from you know mm. that'd be cool because um you know for you to continue on and to remember everything from life is for you to not be in total bliss you know like cuz if if you were if you had cancer or or something hurt you in life mm. If you take that with you to eternity, you know, this is just my feeling, my, not even my opinion, because I, I don't want people to start bashing me, but this is just, I'm just saying what I would like. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, I'm just talking. I just wouldn't want to remember everything because let's just say if something happened to my sister or, or someone that I love, mm. you know, if I remember them when in, for eternity over there, I'm going to remember what happened as well. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'd rather just. So you'd rather, you'd like to be free from yeah that. I th- yeah I think it should just be all just good just maybe we're just like lights of energy and we're just happy lights of energy and we don't even and then if you see someone if you run into that person or that energy or that spirit it's just like oh your spirit feels good for some reason or hmm. familiar but I don't know where you know it's just that <laughs> I like I like the the idea of being free from the constraints or the 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 heaviness of this life, right? Yeah. That sounds cool. The other thought, I, I, as you were telling me that, I was like, or <laughs> what if, what if we remember everything, but it's, but you know why? Now, like it's all, like, there's no mystery around, around right. like what happened. So like, the, yeah. if something happened to your mom or your brother or your sister, yeah, that you saw the connecting dots and you saw the pain of the person that committed the thing, right? And you saw them as chill, you know, like maybe you could see through yeah. and see the total, yeah. the real truth about it. Yeah, that also might be a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I don't know, I don't know. I'm just saying, <laughs> man, it is life is beautiful, man. I, you know, when my aunt passed recently, my, mm. you know, she, um, her, her life. 
it's fun. I never understood why she went so hard every time. This woman went hard every time she stepped up to the mic. You know, every time she played for somebody, she would go. She wouldn't even know you if you didn't have anybody to play in your band. You mm. know, at a, a show they were at. You know, if she knew the song, she would walk up and accompany you. You know, she sang her heart her heart out every time dropping picks. You, you got that's you what you guys just heard. <laughs> Which pick was that? That was the players pick players podcast. Picks. All right, now we know what that pick sounds like now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> But yeah, man, the lesson I learned from her is to just go hard every day. And it's been helping me in sessions. It's been helping me at shows, mm. you know, because, you know, sometimes you get lazy as a performer. You know, you just, I guess you don't snap into go time every time. You're like, all right, I do this every day. Or, But, you know, it's good to like, you know, tap into that feeling of you never know when it's going to be your last time. It's good to carry that, man. Mm. And just, you know, because nothing else you you play better <laughs> yeah you know you feel there's a sense of immediacy yeah for sure and it can uh energize you yeah like it can electrify you to that point i remember there was a couple times where i had I had, a, I had a friend of mine pass away when i was uh had my metal band up in seattle and like he was a good high school buddy and it was an accident a skateboarding accident just oh, crazy. right like and it was it just just tore everybody up we're just like what and i remember sitting there waiting for backstage waiting for our gig to get started and and i just like i was crying and like just kind of like saying a prayer just like mm -hmm. wherever you're at mike you know like yeah. thank you for all your inspiration <laughs> for sure and then this one's for you and all the other ones are for you too but like i i felt so high like i i wasn't high but like we i felt so high and so connected to my instrument and to my purpose that night you yeah, know and man. like what like what's my job here mm -hmm. oh my job is to to express myself uh, you know, it, in in a way that is that is freeing. You know, like if if I can set myself free in this process and be a, 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 an example of a free expression, mm -hmm. then the people watching know that they can do it too. Yeah. And like and then and we pass the torch each mm -hmm. time. It's like okay, so there's there's a part of freedom here, and what we're what we're practicing getting free mm -hmm. within the confines of the musical sphere, right? You know. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. So I, I can identify. I'm. Um, thanks for sharing about your aunt. No doubt. Did she play? Did she play an instrument too, or she just? Sang? Oh yeah, she played piano and she sang. You know, and she was good, man. She was really good. What's her name? Her name was uh, Faye. Faye. Faye Coney. Oh, Faye. Yeah, she was a special person, man. She, she, she would, she would, she would, she would love you too, man. She inspired mm. every musician man people loved her everyone loved her man she was just like she would just inspire everyone to go oh you, you play go let me hear you play you know let me and then she would tell you if you wouldn't if you weren't right <laughs> <laughs> you need to work on this yeah yeah man see uh, I, when i first started playing the uh, piano she i hit, i used to hit the transpose button for a little bit you know what transpose does is it transposes the keyboard to whatever key that you're comfortable playing in mm-hmm she saw me do that once, and man, she said, "Nah." She said, "Don't you hit that transpose button?" And she smacked my hand. <laughs> you stay in this middle she, C. She smacked my hand. She said, "You need to know how to play that song in every key." Hmm. You know. She, okay. So I I didn't hit that transpose button anymore. <laughs> well, see, that's this those type of little things that are markers in our life, right? Especially when when yeah. people that that see you yeah. and they care about you. <laughs> And they, they imprint on you in that way, right? You can't lose it. Oh, that was funny, man. man. That, was, that was that was funny. What uh, I'm curious, um, like, what have you been listening to lately that's got that's got you stoked? Like, uh, I'm always looking. It, you don't it doesn't have to be, but I'm always looking if there's something that maybe isn't that well known. Yeah. That you want to tell me about an artist, or it doesn't have to be a guitar player, but yeah. Um, um man, I've been going back, you know. Um, I've been going back. I've been listening to like Duke Ellington. Oh, really? Which one? Um, Which ones? Uh, some. Uh, um, uh, I can't remember which album. Just particular songs. But I've just been scrolling through uh, Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, Bill Evans. <clears throat> I've been, I, <laughs> and the reason why I'm naming these names is because I, you know I've been writing a lot of them. Um, stuff in Nashville, you know, writing a lot of country music and just writing like singer songwriter stuff. So I've just been trying to let's re expand my harmony again. Mm. You know, from uh you know, just kinda like what we fall into. 
Mm -hmm. when you're writing you know like you know simple simple songs you know that are not as you know harmonically um challenging so i've been doing that uh and then man i've just been uh trying to be a student of like playing the guitar recently so you know i've been you know just checking out guys like uh oh god you guys don't kill me i already i almost don't want to say the name because Guys like Bonamassa, Joe Bonamassa. I, I like Joe. I don't know why Joe's people awesome. give him such a hard time, man. I love what he does, you know. You know, but there are some trolls out there that just... I think, dude. I think I think it comes <laughs> down to like that. He's got he's got a lot of success, <laughs> all right, and and he's got a lot of lawyers and like doctors and dentists. You know what I mean? I think he's got like that crowd, like rock, like people that play a lot of golf. Yeah. They listen to Joe Bonamassa so, for some. You know, I don't know what it is, but. <laughs> but it's but, good. But it's for everybody. It's not just for them. It's not just for them. <laughs> He's a great player. Yeah, he seems like a really nice guy, too. You know, I, I've been to a few of his shows. I know a few of his techs, so um, I, I've been listening to him. Um, I mean, just my normal, you know, stuff, man. I'm a huge Prince fan. I don't know. I'm a huge Prince fan, so a lot of Prince stuff, um, Mayor stuff. I mean, like. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just got back into my Hendrix bag for some reason. Really? I just gave that up. So that was a free one. You're not getting, they ain't got getting any more. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm playing. Nah, so. <laughs> what, uh, what, do you remember, because cause you grew, grew up with so much, like, non-secular music, mm-hmm. do you remember the moment or the time when you first heard Prince? Like, what was that like for you? Oh, dude, I'm going to tell you now. Yeah. Oh, God. Tell okay, me. this is awesome. Forget everything else we said in the interview. <laughs> it's no good. Dude, I was, oh, my God, man. I don't know how old I was, but I was sitting in the back seat of my cousin Tamika's car. My uh, my my other sister, my other cousin was in the car, and I feel like there was a guy in the front. And Diamonds and Pearls came on the radio. Mm. Dude, I was just, I I felt like I can still feel that feeling right now. Mm. I felt like I wasn't I felt weightless, you know? I felt mm. like gravity had no more power over my body at the moment i felt like um everything i felt like it's just like i was blind and all of a sudden i could see whoa dude it was crazy man and like just hearing the, i can i can hear like the like the bells and, and the arrangement you know and the drums and all that and uh well, i forget the lady that's on that record singing right now i can't remember Ro- rosie something <clears throat> sorry i'm saying her name wrong we fix that later it's okay <laughs> um but uh, she man, like I, that changed my life because I, that's when I started to hear like arrangements, you know, like mm-hmm. in music and the 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 '80s guitar solo sound and the drums and the strings and the horns and all that. I was just like, man, this is crazy. Okay, boom, that was it. That was it. All mm-hmm. right, no more Prince. I went through everything else because remember, remember, I couldn't really listen to secular music like that. Oh, you just heard it that one time, <clears throat> right? So I heard it in the car. You know, my cousins listened to it. So I, you know, I, I could only listen to secular music when I would get in the cars of like some of my other friends. So then I heard the other moment I can tell you that changed my life was Tupac. Oh, I was riding with one of my homies, you know, in between church services, and he was playing Tupac, and I was just like, okay. All right, I get this. I understand. And I was a sponge, you know. I was really mm-hmm. good at hearing like sonic, you know, s- s- sonics and stuff. So, so that happened. And then, dude, I didn't I didn't hear Prince again. I mean, like really hear Prince again. This is going to be crazy until I want to say I want to say like so freshman year of college or sophomore year. Wow. All of a sudden, it just hit me again. Like, dude, you have to get into this Prince thing. Mm -hmm. So I did. And from that day until this day, he's still like one of my guys. I remember (laughs) my roommate walked in a room and I was watching one of Prince's live DVDs. First of all, I used to watch Prince's DVDs like it was TV. (laughs) Just leave it on. Just keep watching. Every day. Dude, I mean, for probably six months to a year. Wow. I would study um, that dude, and my roommate came home one time, and I had just saw 
him perform, you know, like Purple Rain on the, I think it's the Rage concert, little white DD, uh, okay. DVD. Um, dude, I was bawling. Mm. Because at that point I was, <laughs> at that point I was like, man, this is this is exactly what I want to do in life, you know. That's amazing. Yeah, like the he was he was definitely the example that made for sure like sealed the yeah. deal for yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Because for me, uh, I I like to like make people feel good and levitate by way of what I'm saying out of my mouth and what I'm doing on on an instrument. Mm. And like he could do that, and it what it just felt like it wasn't a, a gimmick, you know. It it didn't feel like it was a, I'm doing this because I want to be famous, you know. Some people just and mm-hmm. nothing against them, man. I just respect music and I respect people and what they go through and love and the power of music and how you can really like change someone's life. I just feel like that's my job, you know. And I feel like when I watch him, I feel like he felt that way, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck these people up tonight. Like he's very sincere. Yeah. About his efforts in the world. Yeah. Like they they think they're having a bad day. They're gonna they're gonna, after this they're gonna be like, <laughs> I'm 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 good I'm good now for a little bit you know, and I felt that every time I saw him you know what I mean and I, and I always do that when I play when I'm playing with whoever whether I'm you know a side man or if I'm playing my own shows like dude man like. I just pour it, dude. It's all out on the stage, man. So you, do you feel in that way, do you feel like connected to your music and your performance being of service to? Yeah, for sure. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is, man. That's why I, I write a certain way. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, especially the solo stuff, man. Like, I, I just write, you know, like, <laughs> sometimes people come in with certain topics and I'm like, man, we got enough of that. Mm. Yeah, it's just enough of that on the news. You know, it's enough of... Like I, you know, I want people to like feel a certain way when they hear, you know what I mean? Me open my mouth, you know. It's always get it. It's either it's either fall in love, go out and get it, have a good time. Don't let them stop you, you know. It, it's mm. you know what I mean. Or if there is a message about wanting to give up or something, you know, those things are appropriate as well. Sure. But there's the you know it, it, there has to be a way out. You know, that's my whole thing, you know. So the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Has to be, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? It's just, or just, you know, yeah, it has to be. Well, the, the world needs it. I mean, we, we always has, and I think that's why, uh, I think that's why it's even more important nowadays because we, we can communicate to a wide audience mm-hmm. a lot of individuals have a, have their own platform now and so mm-hmm. um you could and I, and I get it uh there are certain artists out there that like hey look my art is showing the dark side of things mm-hmm. and um I, I do believe that there's a place for that yeah for sure yeah. Uh, because because yeah. that's a part of the whole yeah. right like uh yeah. especially like and i i like heavy metal stuff so i like yeah. i can kind of you know deal with that mm-hmm. but at the same time the older I, the old more I've, I've the older I've gotten the more I've evolved the more I have felt the weight of my actions mm-hmm. like and, and I know that I could I could go out and I could create dark art that was and and, and, and that really mined those depths for mm-hmm. some interesting things mm-hmm. um, but I don't feel I, I don't feel connected to that the way other people do I feel connected to raising the vibration. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, much in the way that you're just telling me, like I, I, I stay on the up and up, yeah. Because, I mean, I could. It just if today is my last day. Mm-hmm. Then what's the last thing I'm gonna say, and how am I gonna say it, and who's gonna hear it, mm-hmm. and how's it gonna affect the next wave of of humanity, right? Like, and yeah. it may not affect anybody because my platform's too small, right? But the, but it might affect my my neighbors or my mm-hmm. my 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 relatives my family or whatever yeah so it is important to always kind of have your eye uh on on the 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 light in a way right to kind of be drawn towards that and try to see if uh yeah it's not a bad thing yeah and the dark is good i get it like you said it's a part of it like there's light and there's dark so nothing against those guys right who who, you know we support each other you know absolutely there can't be one without the other right right for sure there's nothing to contrast against if, it, if it's not there yeah and i've been there so i know how to I, I know how to talk about the light you know so 
it's not that I don't want to talk about it. I just rather talk about getting out of it because I've been there, you know, mm. or we go there, every, you know, you know, not even been there. Not to say that I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be there later. You know <laughs> sure, what I mean? Sure. Just, you know, it's just, I'd rather like push people, you know, and, and inspire them because we all need it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we all need it. So, you know, I'd, I'd just rather just be like, nah, man, come on, y'all. We got to, we got to, we got to figure this out. You know, don't let them stop you. You know what I mean? Let's, let, uh, let's bust through this, you know, let's get this done, you know? So, mm. It's awesome. <laughs> dude, thank you so much for being here with me today, Kurt. Dude, I'm going to wrap it up. I know yeah. you got to get going to the, the session over there at Dre's. So. Yeah, man. Um, I appreciate uh, you taking the time and, and kicking it with me. Anytime. Players Pick Podcast. Picks and Perspective with Chris Johnson. This episode of Players Pick Podcast brought to you by our good friends at Jim Dunlop Guitar Products. Kiesel Custom Guitars, Mackie Headphones and Mixers. Sound design by Drew the Drew. Voiceovers by the amazing Mini Joe. I've been your host, Chris Johnson. Until next time. <laughs>